Hi, I'm Kurt Kelly for Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter with coverage from NAB 2012 in this episode, Ann Feldman. And hear about her latest technology with Ramage, Tim Jones from Tolis Group, Gary Marshall, actor, performer, producer, writer, entertainer galore, and a celebrity moment with him. All that and much more coming up in this episode of NAB 2012 from Las Vegas. This is Nick Saber from the Pulse Network at thepulsenetwork.com. You're watching Kirk Kelly from the Actors Reporter. Welcome to NAB 2012, live from Las Vegas. From Las Vegas, it's NAB 2012. Uh, hello, I'm Michael Constantine from Prime Focus Technologies here at uh, NAB 2012. Um, we have just been spending some time with the uh, Actors Reporter, hosted by Kurt Kenny here, and we're delighted to be here at this, uh, this show. We've got some wonderful things to talk about, and our people seem to be liking it, so thanks very much. And now let's meet Ann Feldman, the product manager from Ramage Signal Online Publishing. And she'll be talking about a new technology they've developed for document, video handling, and so much more. I'm Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. We are at NAB 2012 with Ann Fellman, who is with Ramage. Hi, Kurt. Ramage is a business that's all about getting content to their customers. Mm -hmm. We help businesses get content to their customers, whether that content is videos, images, audio files, or business documents securely to their customers. So this is like a cloud transfer program? Well, that's one aspect of Ramage. And so what Signal Online Publishing is, is cloud transfer. It's a secure online content publishing platform. So really it's all about, I've got content and I need to get it my, to my customers securely, and I can do that with Signal Online Publishing. What is so cool about this that they said I had to be here? Well, the reason that it's so cool is the fact that it gives companies the ability to control their content even after it leaves the four walls of their organization. Okay, and that's, that's important. And the second piece is... Is, is that, that from a piracy aspect? Yeah, so studios are looking at Ramage Signal Online Publishing give them the ability to securely deliver those screeners or that high value video uh, content yes. to someone that might be outside their organization. And at the same time, they can still protect and control that content. It's not delivered through email. So what happens is that Signal is a lightweight app that's downloaded to the device. The device could be an iPad, could be an Android tablet, it could be Windows or a Mac PC. So once I'm invited to receive content, the content automatically downloads oh, to the device. So I'm this, not dealing with email. This is like email. a push technology, of, if you will. Exactly. See, I told you I wasn't just another pretty voice. This is like a push technology, if you will, and it's not um, like I sent an email through Gmail. This is a, a subscription base? This is, you opt in? Well, you're invited to receive okay. secure content. So. Kurt, I really like you and I need you to see the screener, so I'm going to invite you to the screener's channel. Okay. You accept the subscription. I have my own private you username app. and password? No, there's no usernames and passwords. That's what's great. Why? You, you don't have to deal with the username and password. So once you've been invited, your device is authorized for that content. For, for a secure, unique link for me or I could send that to a friend even? You send it to a friend, they can't view it. So Your device it is, is not authorized. unique to my Your device. IP it is unique. device. You're, you're okay. unique to your device. So we, we identify the device, and then we automatically push that content to your device. So right. now, I don't have to dig through email and find that file that you sent to me. I don't Love have to that. log into a portal. Love that. With, and remember my user ID and password. And the next Or thing, have them tell me someone hacked me. Yeah. The, this, the, the other great thing is the fact that, you know what? We're traveling. We're moving around. Mm -hmm. We're not always connected. And so what Signal does is it securely downloads that content automatically for you mm -hmm. to your device. You can view that content, whether you're online or offline. So this can be done with video, can be done with email. Can this be done with cloud doc sharing? It can be, it can be done with video. We can securely push video to the devices. Mm -hmm. We can securely push images. So think mm -hmm. of stills. Right. We can securely push document-based. So, so PDF scripts. PDF scripts, you know, business presentations. That business content can be securely final delivered. Draft Audio pro. files, music. Okay. So we can securely deliver music. Say you've got a, a you know group of actors that need to have the latest song that they're practicing right. on 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 their iPad. You can securely get that to their iPad. They can use that content, and you still maintain control of it. 
but the good news is it sounds like you've made this pretty bulletproof. Right, we've you know really given organizations the ability to control their content wherever it goes, and then the ability to you know revoke rights on that content. What if I have, not me, because it would really annoy me if I did, but what if someone has malware or viruses on their computer that spam the world and they have no idea that's going on? Would that be impacted by this, or would that be impenetrable to malicious attacks? It, it, it would have no effect. And really, really, the content stays encrypted. And we, okay. and what that means is it, it remains secure. Like it's, an SSL security? or um, It's AES-128 encryption. Higher. Yes. <laughs> And, and basically, what, it, what it's all about is the content stays secure, whether right. it's at rest, not being viewed on your device, and it's even encrypted, it stays encrypted while you're even viewing the content. So, uh, you know, organizations like the Hollywood Studios really like, you know, what this product is trying to do to help them maintain the security of that content. Up next, we have Kirk Kelly, who's going to be interviewing some innovators who are making headway in the broadcasting market. Uh, crossing all platforms of media. So you don't want to miss out and uh, stay tuned for some great stuff coming up. Thanks. Oh, another day at the NAB. People heading to their hotels, to their meetings, to their after parties after another day at NAB 2012. Stick around, we will have information about new technology, about entertainment devices, entertainment platforms, new ways that you can entertain yourself from technology that's been innovated and displayed here in Las Vegas this year at NAB. I'm Kurt Kelly for Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming up next on our coverage of NAB 2012. So if I was having my band do a concert out of my garage or wherever, I could live stream it. Exactly. In uh, real time. In real time. Wow. Hi, I'm Jill Clausen smith with Chameleon Productions. And I'm Kami Coleman with Chameleon Productions. And we're here at the NAB Convention 2012 in Las Vegas. Um, we'll be right back with Kurt Kelly with Live Video Incorporated and Actors Report. Yes, <laughs> Actors Reporter. Meet Jessica Cantor, who is the head of marketing and content for Livestream. They've redefined the live streaming experience with a new distributed hardware called Livestream Broadcaster. The Livestream Broadcaster is an HD live broadcasting device. I'm with Jessica Cantor, and I already love her energy, and we just met. <laughs> she exudes Livestream. Oh, and by the way, you work there. I do work there. Um, I run marketing for Livestream, and we're at the conference this week launching a new device called the Livestream Broadcaster. Would you stop making that noise? Okay. <laughs> uh, so what is Livestream for someone who's not familiar with your company? Okay, li Livestream is a place um, for live events to live on the web, and that means broadcast in real time to the web. So, so uh, if I was having my band do a concert out of my garage or wherever, I could live stream it. Exactly. In uh, real time. In real time. Wow. We had a really successful show. We won an award from Broadcast Engineering. Um, what was the award for? For launching our device, the Livestream Broadcaster. And, you know, we, we are a platform for live events, but we right. also have the software that anyone can use and download. And now we uh, announced the first hardware device that's seamlessly integrated to a platform. <laughs> so what does that mean in layman terms? In layman terms is you just need an HDMI video out, right. a broadcasting box, an internet connection, and you're streaming live to the internet. Good to go. Yep. Is there any um, impedance that would limit the amount of streams I can project or the speed I can project at? Um, well, it's one video stream for this box. Right. But on our site, you can come out of a switcher. Right. So any any switching device, and you can have a full embedded um, so I could mirror through YouTube or mirror through multiple sites uh, on that same stream? So this is built to work with our site, mm -hmm. um, and there's where it would live on the web. Okay. So through your site, how many people could hit my stream simultaneously? 
Uh, you mean your audience? Correct. I think it really depends on how popular you are. Yeah, let's say I was you too, which I'm not. So you're, I mean, we have, we're partnered with Acma HDNet, so okay. we can scale and handle millions of people on our site at once. Literally. Literally. So you could do the Austin Music Festival. So or... we did the Royal Wedding, actually. And, and we did... I hear a few people showed up for that. Yeah, just on a the couple. Internet. Just a couple. How many people actually were recorded viewing that? Any idea? Um, so I, I believe it was in the 300,000 were concurrent viewers over the course of hours. So wow. it was millions and millions of viewers, but at any given time, there, there was a, like, you know, between 200 and 3,000 people on that page watching that video player. The response of 100,000 or a half a million people all of a sudden tuning in to really see what's being said and what's going on. It's it, to the point we're getting to unfiltered entertainment, unfiltered news. People have so many choices between internet, cable, and other broadcast methods. They can even be grabbing their phone and streaming technologies. How do you scale your technology to all those platforms? I mean, onto mobile. And mobile, iPods. So we're already working across mobile and web browsers. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of connected televisions, you know, if you have a TV that's connected, you can stream like on a Google browser. Like Google TV. Yeah, you could stream on a browser. Um, and, you know, down the line, we'll definitely hope to be something that you could search through an app of, and find events that you want to see that are live. So people could actually go to your site, and even if there wasn't something that they were normally looking for, you have libraries or events coming up that they could sign up for exactly. and opt in? Yeah, they could come to our site um, and see a, a whole range of events that are coming up in the next couple of months. Um, they can go through some of the past events if they've missed them. Right. Uh, even if they arrive late to the page, our player has DVR functionality so they can wow. watch from the beginning. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot they can do. Is Anne Marie coming at the NAB show in Las Vegas? 2012. It's been a great show. We've had a great turnout of attendees and exhibitors and hundreds of educational sessions, but we're getting ready to wrap this up. Just had a great interview with Kurt Kelly out here and um, signing off. <laughs> Meet Gabor Kutai, who is the Chief Technical Officer for Production Minds, which has a new revolutionary online collaborative platform for video and film professionals, which allows the experience of everyone to work together together from inception to completion of finished product. I'm Kurt Kelly from Actors Reporter and Live Video Inc. and we're at the NAB, National Association of Broadcasters Convention 2012, live in Las Vegas with Gabor Kutai. Kutai. That's right. Kutai. Hi, how are you? So what's your background? Obviously, this Production Minds being a newer company, what have you done prior to this before we dive into that? I was involved uh, both in the uh, production side of the things and uh, also in IT. I started in IT oh, well back in the 90s and uh, then I switched to, uh, you know, I wanted to become a film editor so I moved towards production and right. I, I've been doing that for the last 12 years. So how long have you been with Production Minds? Uh, Production Minds is uh, fairly new. Uh, we started last September. If I'm a new user and I just loaded this to my Apple, my Windows, what can I put this anywhere? Uh, you don't have to put it anywhere. Actually, this is all on the web. Uh, this is running in a web browser. So, so I can Twitter it? Yeah, you can uh, log in uh, from any computer, from anywhere in the world. And uh, all your crew members can do the same and have access to the same information on the same interface. Hold on, I could log in with my Facebook or Gmail ID yeah, and I'm already in. You can do it as well. What you do here is uh, you can set up your crew uh, for a production. Uh, this is a demo production we have set up here. Uh, the whole page is branded with uh, your production company logo and then uh, you bring in your company contacts, you add uh, people to the crew, uh, assign different positions to them and that determines what they have and they do not have access to, right? Wow, I got it here as a production assistant. Yeah, you Look are, it, I'm a PA. That. I've always wanted to do that. What's next is we have a uh, script breakdown tool because everything starts with the script. Uh, you can uh, import your script, browse it on the left, and then uh, your assistant director comes in and uh, you know start assigning all these elements to it, like characters, props, wardrobe, everything, even titles. New voiceover. Uh, voiceovers, yeah, that's right. Because everything is interconnected in the system. And it's very easy to make changes. You just uh, click about uh, make this uh, a totally move instead of a static and move. That's two clicks. 
I, I'm curious, does this also integrate in budgeting with this? Like, this scene is going to cost me X amount of dollars. Is that part of the prototype of where you're heading with this? Uh, it's in our pipeline. It, mm -hmm. This version does not have it yet, but uh, we are adding more department features. What we're covering right now is uh, storyboarding, production design, location scouting, and casting. What if I'm rewriting the script on the fly as we go? Can the writers also go in and collaborate on the cloud and, and edit? Absolutely. You can, you can invite your writers to log into the same system. Uh, they can apply their changes, and then you are notified of the changes. You can make yours. Or if a producer like myself wants to make a change, how do you track whose change it is? Was it Tom Writer or Kurt Producer? or in my case, the assistant to uh, whatever that guy was, uh, or you, the line producer, how do you delineate whose line notes those are? Uh, it's very easy. Uh, you have this uh, communication panel on every feature page. Right. Uh, it's uh, sort of like a uh, activity stream that you may be familiar with from Facebook or... Something. Almost like a live chat news yeah. line? Yeah, it is pretty much like it. It shows all the changes uh, that's happened to this uh, particular item here. I can also make comments about anything. I can even make a comment about part of an image. Say, uh, I click that chair, and I can make a note to my storyboard artist to remove it. So this will go into consumer use when? Uh, there will be a public beta release uh, in September this year, and uh, this will be commercially available in December. Very nice to meet you, Gabor. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for sharing your technology. I'm Kurt Kelly with Actors of Reporting and Live Videoing. We'll be back with more of the NAB in just a moment. Hi, I'm Irene Conrad from Brightshot. We're at booth C8228 at NAB 2012. Come and visit us. We're here with Actors Reporter and Kurt Kelly, and thank you for this interview. Coming up, a celebrity spotlight with Gary Marshall. You won't want to miss that one. From NAB 2012, we'll be back in just a few moments. I'm Kurt Kelly for Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. Stick around. I'm Dennis Wharton, the NAB Executive Vice President of Communications. I'm happy to be here with Kurt Kelly and Actors Reporters, the online service that I never miss. I'm Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. We're live at NAB, and it's funny, you'll bump into people in the strangest places. I was supposed to be with Tim uh, from the TOLUS group. Is that how you pronounce it correctly? Yeah. Tim Jones, who is the president of TOLUS. And we've been not connecting because of the 100,000 close personal friends that we have here today. <laughs> Every, everybody wants a piece. Oh, my goodness. TOLUS is, uh, is an acronym that we came up when we found it, refounded ourselves in 2001. It's a talented organization leveraging intelligent solutions. Our idea is rather than try and create everything from scratch, we would partner with people that had best of breed solutions, incorporate them into a package that we could then deliver to our customers. So our customers aren't having to look here and look here and look over there to find the parts that they need to do their job. The idea is we want, our goal is to provide a solution that allows everyone from a small environment, an independent, to a large corporate uh, you know, full-blown studio to actually be able to take everything that they create and put it into an environment where it is going to be safe for 20, 30, 50, 100 years. Literally a safe archive. Exactly. And, and so what we do with our brew product is we ensure that it works both with the data that these organizations are creating and the devices that are available on the market to actually store that data. What we try to do with the archival solutions that we provide is make sure that once the data is on the tape, it is safe and they're able to vault that. Then in vaulting it, they're protecting it both physically through the location control and electronically through our way that we write it to the media. We give a piece of that puzzle, but there are other components that have to be taken into account. And of course, smart data management is one of those things. Now we shine the spotlight on Gary Marshall, an American director, actor, writer, producer. He has notable credits that just range the gamut from Happy Days, The Odd Couple, Runaway Bride, Valentine's Day, The Prince's Diaries, to name a few. And now, meet Gary Marshall. You gotta change, that's the broadcasting business. Technology, they change, but creatively, we also have to change. I started writing jokes. I thought, oh, I write jokes. I, it was nice, some guys took my jokes, lit them on fire, and burned them into a guy. That was my first burning rejection I had. But 
I went from there, they said, no, you gotta change, you gotta write stories. I wrote the stories, Dick Van Dyke, etc. Lucy, and then they said, no more husband and wife, you need something different. So we did the odd couple we got. And every moment we had to do changes to, then they said, nice family show. So we did Happy Days. I had a character who said, whoa and hey, that was his part. It, it was so easy to write that. He wrote a bow or a hey, and he made gestures. And then they said, you know, he's pretty good, that guy. And suddenly he became one of the stars of the show, Henry Winkler, wonderful actor. And then they said, well, we don't have many girls. I said, you got the wrong girls. You got all fancy girls. You need some blue collar girls. And we did Laverne and Shirley. It was a nice show, it gave my sister a job. My mother left me alone. So. There we were. The wonderful uh, actors of Second City are on Saturday Night Live. That humor was not at the 8 o'clock television. So we came up with Robin Williams, a wonderful guy who did very topical, fast, funny humor. He was a little difficult at first because uh, in those days on Mark and Mindy, the average age of the cameramen were like 82. And they had kind of, and they had, and they slid like this with the camera. We used three cameras. And my main guy was Sam, Sam Rosen. He stood there, and Robin came out, and I directed the first time, and I said, okay, let's do it. We had a script, and he, and he ran around the stage. He was all over the place, ad-libbing, doing the script, doing everything. And then I yelled, cut! And I say, did you get that, Sam? He said, he never came by here. I said, Sam, the man is a genius. And Sam said, if he's such a genius, let him hit the mark right here. That's what a genius does. So he adjusted. We got a fourth camera. <laughs> And that's how we captured Robin. Hi, I'm Tony Orchard with Intel, in front of the Thunderbolt booth here at NAB 2012. Coming up on a future episode of NAB 2012, people from Vancore Music Licensing and Alexia Franks and the people from Prime Focus. We have continuing coverage of NAB 2012 coming up soon. I'm Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. Thanks for joining us. Kurt Kelly, Live Video Inc., Actors Reporter. That sound behind me was not me having a problem. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist. You know what that sounded like, don't you? Okay, I'm with... <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, no. <laughs> Now, it's time for the NAB 2012 Special Bonus Moments from Las Vegas. Okay, there's a theme here. Um, all right, congratulations to our next winner, K-D-O-W-A-M, Duke Montana. KBOW-AM 550 reaches out to make life better for individuals and groups throughout the Butte area. When a local teenager was diagnosed with cancer, KBOW organized a Kids Day Carnival, an auction event that raised $100,000. That helped cover the costs of treatment that brought the 15-year-old into remission. The community at large reaped an economic benefit of more than $4 million through a nonprofit organization led by KBOW owner Ron Davis. It was organized to foster economic development through sports. KBOW staff volunteers with more than 30 local service groups. And the station continues its daily party line local affairs show, now marking its 51st anniversary on the air. Congratulations and thank you. K-B-O-W, Butte, Montana. Wow. I wasn't prepared for this. I had no thought we would win because we do what everybody does. Commissioners, when you look around this room, you see hundreds of radio stations that deserve to be up here more than we do. 
because it's what radio does. We serve our communities and we go the extra mile, we do the things, we help the people that need help, and we help take care of the people in the communities we're licensed to serve. It's what we do, and we're proud of it. I accept the honor today on behalf of our 18 staff members who all put in lots of hours and do a lot of work, and they're always there for all the events. And we still do radio the old-fashioned way in Butte, Montana. It's live, it's local, and it's the community. Thank you. to announce the next winner, uh, KCDM FM, Cedar Falls, Iowa. Every community has its local heroes, frequently unsung and unnoticed. But in Cedar Falls, KCVM led the way, recognizing the recipients of the local Heroes Among Us campaign. They created a 10-part documentary to honor them and helped raise more than $30,000 in the process. Casey began partnered with other local media to bring Cedar Falls its first Honor Flight program, with volunteers raising more than $200,000 to send 240 World War II veterans to see their memorial in Washington, D.C. And KCBM staff joined with 65 dedicated volunteers in a year-round drive to organize and fund an all-expense-paid trip to Walt Disney World for 12 families of chronically and terminally ill children from the Cedar Falls area. Congratulations and thank you, KCVM Cedar Falls. such an honor to be part of welcoming with the NAB and thank you so very much to our station owners, the Koloffs, which are a second generation family owned radio station. It is such an honor to serve for this radio station with the smaller staff that we have and Jim Koloff is one of the best bosses in the whole wide world to let us do all of the things that we do. I thank our staff for allowing everything that we are able to do. And like everyone said, this is just basically what we do on a daily basis because we love it and radio is in our blood. It is about being locally owned and operated and taking care of our community in the Cedar Valley. Thank you so very much for this honor. Thank you. Thank you. 